Hi. <laughs> okay, I think we're on. Oh my gosh. I always have so much fun trying to get on here. And, um, oh, there we go. Okay, I think I'm figuring it out finally. So, um, good morning, everyone. Wow, it's Monday. Holy cow. So, um, yeah, it went, the weekend went really fast. So I have a few things to share with you and to do. And, and uh, yeah, looking forward to um, all the exciting things that are happening in the, in the, in the world of wild foods. <laughs> it's just so much fun. So I'm going to start chopping onions because that's the boring part that, um, that you guys are used to seeing me do. And, uh, you know, for the people that, that are here all the time, it's really, um, yeah, it's really fun to see everybody here. So anyway, I'm going to start chopping the onions because, um, for the people that are, that watch often, um, I do usually start most dishes with onions. They're so good for you. They're anti-inflammatory. They, um, have, uh, antihistamine properties. They are, you know, just super, really important in one's diet. And um, so when I'm making the soups or, you know, stews or most dishes that I make, normally they have onions in them. So I always start with a pan with, the, um, with just water in it. I don't normally add oil or anything to it um, until maybe later if I want a coconut oil for a little glaze or something. Then... Um, Hey, hi. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's Jane. There's Darlene. Hey, good morning. Monday morning. So we're doing the onion thing as usual. We're getting these onions ready. And, um, and we're going to share some things that I found on the weekend and um, the uh, wild crafting that I did. And it looks, it's, it's very exciting today because... It's sunny. <laughs> How bad is that? How bad is that? That here we are. I don't know. What are we? The second week of July, and um, it's sunny finally. So that's like super, super exciting. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get out in the garden, and I'm hoping everything comes along. You know, it, it hasn't been too bad really for the garden because um, all the cool weather plants have have done really well and actually done several crops. You know, if it's too hot, then the lettuce doesn't like it and it tends to bolt. <clears throat> so I've had tons of lettuce and, and the peas are liking it and the, definitely the turnips and, um, you know, those things, <laughs> those other things. Um, unfortunately, the slugs like it too. So that's been really hard to deal with. Um, but anyway, we're getting there. It's getting there. I'm, I'm learning to, um, I'm learning to understand slug language and, and what they like and, and where they hide and all of those things. And so, yeah, so, um, I think I want these carrots tinier. Um, I just want little pieces. I don't really want little rounds. So I'm gonna, <laughs> this would be way easier if you used a mandolin or a food processor. But that's okay. We're not going to do that today. Um, I don't need a whole lot of carrots in here anyway because uh, what we did on... Um, hey, Heather. Hi, Kate. Hey. Hi, everybody. That's awesome. So, um, oh, how's my mouth feeling? Actually, you know what? The I can, I can feel the stitches and, and it's it feels mushy. It's not... Uh, it hasn't been painful. It hasn't been painful at all really since the first day because um because i was taking the arnica the homeopathic arnica and um you know drinking the teas the uh, anti-inflammatory teas and my vitality tea and my vitality tea is super awesome for the immune system it has um ashwagandha and astragalus and and um ginseng and all the things that really help your immune system so so it helps for faster healing as well so um yeah so it's just a really great 
I don't know why when I put my live on my other phone to read the comments, it just goes on to some other video and now it's showing baby sea otters. <laughs> I don't know why. But anyway, so for the Vitality Tea, yeah, it's really quite healing. And it has lemon balm, uh, which we talked about uh, last week, lemon balm being antiviral and super good for your health. And uh, has lemon balm, lemongrass, uh, so it's got the really nice, um, gentle flavor. And um, so that's really been helpful. And of course, you know, greens and smoothies and all that kind of thing. Speaking of which, um, I did do a, uh, a real, a real, real good sauerkraut video. Um, I didn't do it with you guys live because I really need it on my YouTube by itself you know, without me randomly chatting away about all kinds of different interesting health things. So, um, I think it uploaded. I'm not sure, but I think it uploaded onto the YouTube. So, there's a really good video. I'm just going to get these carrots going in here before I show you. Um, I think that's enough, because I'm not going to make that big of a batch of soup. Like, I seriously, as you know, as you've seen the, this past couple months, I make soup uh, almost every other day, and so at least three times a week because we have soup every single day, even this, in the summer. So, um, yeah, down your roll of ice, it's good for you, and so and it's so easy. You just chop up a bunch of vegetables, throw them in a pot, and away you go. Anyway, so for the sauerkraut, I did do this. Um, I did put, usually I use a one-gallon glass jar, which I should have done, um, but we've got such a... Um, so many things happening with all the wild foods and and I've just got jars of stuff everywhere and so I, I didn't have like an empty uh, one gallon right now I need to transfer some of my uh, dried herbs into um, vacuum packs and so um, in smaller jars and you know I'm tincturing and I've just got seriously tables and tables of herbs all getting ready for this winter so that um, so, so that, um, I'm just looking at the, the comments thing. That is so weird. Anyways, um, yeah, so I've got all kinds of things drying and tincturing for medicine for the winter. And uh, salves and all that kind of stuff. And so anyway, I didn't have a one-gallon jar. And so I did it in here. And so what you do is you put the cabbage leaves, some cabbage leaves on top to protect it. Keep it underneath the brine. And so it's just the salt brine. So you take off your little cabbage leaves and you can see that it is um, really beautiful sauerkraut already and that was um, I don't know I think it was Saturday so today's Monday so it's only two or three days old and I cut it up very fine and so it's already turning into sauerkraut I personally like to add um, a small onion and a and carrots and so I don't think I did that in the video because I wanted it to just be something for people to see um, how to just do the regular, original, just cabbage, uh, raw fermented sauerkraut. But, and then I added this after. So you can do that. You can add flavors. You can add ginger. You can whatever. Always, always, like I'm squishing it down, you always want to make sure every piece is underneath the brine, the salt water, because otherwise it will mold. And then these little cabbage pieces just hold it down. Um, you know, there's a million recipes on the internet. You can use weights to hold it down. And you can use that, that fancy little jar top thing. I don't happen to have it near me here. But, um, and then just cover it with a cloth. Or, or if you want, you can do it with a loose lid. The trick to it is to make sure that you um, check it like daily. And so, you know, I mean, really, if it stays warm like this, it can start fermenting in three days. And, and also, if it's cut very fine, it'll ferment faster. So, um, so, yeah, so we start eating it right away. That's what I was going to say. Just take a little handful out, throw it in your salad, and it kind of just tastes like cabbage with, with onions and carrots, which is awesome to add to your salad. And then it gets a little bit more like sauerkraut, a little bit more. So it can take, depending on how warm your room is, anywhere from um, three days to two weeks. And then you can put it in the fridge for storage, and that stops the fermentation process. So anyway, so I did that for you guys. I know I said we would do it together, but 
Um, but I want it to be on its own without me doing all kinds of what I do here every day. A little of this and a little of that and all kinds of fun things. So they had um, turmeric. I'm so excited. I got turmeric root. Um, so I am going to uh, add the actual root to this. This is going to be a soup, by the way. I didn't tell you guys what I'm doing yet. And um, that's just the weirdest thing. Anyways, it's such a beautiful root with the orange here with the turmeric. And uh, I'm going to add a little bit of the, uh, have some yellow pepper here from the other day and have a little bit of red. And I'm just going to throw these in um, for color. Although uh, I did manage to pick up some organic um, bell peppers, which is super awesome, you know, because they do have the vitamin C and the vitamin A and the different, um, you know, qualities. It's just that in the winter, they're so GMO, but, uh, what I'd like to do is get a bunch of organic ones and dehydrate them for this winter. And then I can just use a dehydrator, which I didn't have time to do that in past years. And, um, this year I have a lot more time on my hands. <laughs> To do all kinds of really fun things so um yeah so <laughs> i just want to check on this other thing here it's so bizarre okay so the next thing we're going to do uh we're going to add oh celery celery is sitting right here in front of me okay so um we're going to add the celery to, and I am going to turn this up just a bit more. And I'm just going to cut it really fine. I'm going to watch what I'm doing now. I'm not going to look at you guys because I don't want to cut myself. So, yeah, I don't want a whole lot of celery either, just a little bit. And, and of course, for anyone that's new that hasn't seen me do this before, work with celery. Celery has um, lots of um, organic sodium, like the salt, like your, the tears in your eyes, right? It's the salty um, sodium type, like similar to your lymphatic fluid. And so the um, celery is super good with that natural source of, of that sodium that we need. It's not salt. Um, and it's really good for um, arthritis or um, any, any inflammation or anything like that. It's a really, really good... Um, honestly for juicing and everything and actually there were some comments and um, oh my gosh there were some comments of um, about how bad celery tastes and I was just like um, oh my gosh I was so uh, talking about how the flavor is and and uh, you can add it to other things you don't have to eat it straight up like celery juice straight up is a little bit strong but if you add it to other juices and things like that then it's perfectly fine for um you know like you'll still get that that natural sodium and that anti-inflammatory arthritic thing my hands got really sticky from that i'm just gonna rinse them off here i'm not really sure why um I don't know what I touched, but I'll show you something sticky. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm just going to let that cook a bit before I add. I'm going to put cabbage in here, and then I'll show you what I'm doing. But uh, I'll let that cook down a bit. But speaking of sticky, look at what I got. What I received as a gift is so super awesome. Um, Saskatoon berries. Oh, my gosh. I was so excited to get a bag of Saskatoon berries. They are just the most beautiful things. And I, I'm not that familiar with them because um, I don't know very many places that have them around here. Um, so they're very interesting and kind of, look at the little Saskatoon leaf there. Um, they're thick, like a little, a little mealy. I don't know if that's the right word, mealy. But they have, um, they're a little, a little chewy, right? So, um I want to show you. Okay, so like when we made this last week, this is the thimble berries, right? And so we put the thimble berries in the apple cider vinegar and the honey to preserve them and to make like a syrup, sort of, for the um, salad dressing to put on the salads. And but as yes, you can see, it's quite watery, and because the berries quite watery, and 
most berries are. Like I was doing huckleberries the other day, you know, they're very watery, and of course your raspberries can be watery too. And so um, these guys are quite mealy and thick inside, so I thought they'd make an awesome syrup, so that's what I did. Now what I did, and what you can do, if you're lucky enough to get them, or you can do it with any berry, um, uh, I'm making an actual syrup, but where, whereas these here are just put in uh, cold, and I did it with um, raspberries too, but it's over there, I'm not going to go over and get it. You're just adding these in cold, so you just put the berries in the whatever, you can put it in a canning jar or whatever, and then you can um, just pour your apple cider vinegar over it and your honey, and then if your honey's thick, you want to put it in kind of a warm place just so that the honey mixes, you know, through the berries and stuff. And this will preserve for like, I don't know, I've had this one, the blackberry one I did for a couple of years. And so it's kind of a syrup, but it's a raw, it's not really fermented, but it's raw. And so it has, a, you know, a lot more, anything raw is going to have a lot more health benefits. But for here, I'm making a syrup and I'm actually cooking it up like we did the elderberry syrup last week or the week before we did elderberry syrup and elderberry oxymel. And so this one here, I did do the, um, I cooked them up. And so you can tell right away, it's just a little bit thicker. Um, but this is the first cook. What I'm going to do, I brought this to a boil to start breaking it down and then I will, um, bring it to a boil again and just let it cook down a little bit and then I'm going to strain off the um, the berries and put them through a sieve and then I'm going to bring it to a simmer for like 45 minutes to really get it nice and thick and uh, and so that will actually turn out more like a syrup and then we'll see you know they're very very sweet so I might not even have to add any honey or anything like that of course if you don't add the honey it you have to um, you have to keep it in the fridge, right? You have to watch because there's nothing in there to preserve it. So, um, so I will turn it into like half of it into an oxymel or add the um, honey or the or apple cider vinegar. We'll just see how thick it turns out, and I'll keep you guys tuned in to um, to let you know how that goes. But I was so excited to get them because these these guys are like super crazy. Um, and I know it sounds like I say that about a lot of things, but these are really, really good for brain function. Like they're, um, they've worked with um, all kinds of um, cognitive function, brain function, um, nerve disorders. Um, you know, they, they're they full of um, those, the anti-inflammatory and the um, cyanidins, cyanidins, anthocyanidins. Um, so they're good for your eyes, right? They've got lutein good for your eyes and just so many amazing things so uh, they also have fiber and um, and protein which is unusual for a berry like they've got over a gram of protein per you know little bit I don't know 100 grams or something and so it's kind of neat and I think maybe that's why they're mealy it, you know I think maybe that's where the protein comes from and of course they're going to have vitamin C and iron and all that kind of stuff but especially good for brain function and they say anti-aging so I was hoping I had gotten a lot more than I did, um, and maybe I will. But yeah, I definitely look forward to that anti-aging brain function, although I seriously think it's too late for me. But um, that's okay. You know, like my girlfriend says, it's at this age, it's not so much about how you look. It's more about how you feel. And if you feel good and you can function and you can... Um, you know, you're physically able and physically feeling well and capable of, of doing things and going out and, and um, you know, being able to walk around without aches and pains, not being on a whole pile of drugs and, and stuff like that. Uh, if you can do that, then um, that's more important than how, than how you look. So uh, sometimes the two are related. So anyways, um, I'm just looking at the... Uh, at the um, turmeric, and I, I'm pretty sure it's going to get mistaken for a piece of sweet potato or a carrot. So I think I'll take the skinny piece out, although it's perfectly fine to eat, um, <laughs> just to, so that uh, someone around here doesn't have any uh, weirder surprises than usual. But it's going to get weirder. Just wait. What we're going to do here, we are going to, we're going to add cabbage to it. 
And um, I mean, cabbage soup is always so good for you. There's, there's been, um, I don't even know how many cabbage recipes for cabbage soup to help you lose weight and blah, 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 and all the great things that cabbage do. Cabbage do, all the great things that cabbage do. They do lots. Um, green ones, really good, high in vitamin K. Um, but the red ones, are, oh, and then they have vitamin C, and then the red ones are higher in vitamin C than vitamin K, but they're just super, super good for you. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to this, too, because I can hear it touching the bottom, and I don't want to really cook anymore. I just want to be warm. So what I'm going to show you here is my awesome find of um, cat's ears. I don't want to, I did rinse the roots off, but in case there's something a little drippy, um, I don't want to put them over my food yet. So these are cat's ears. You can tell it looks like a dandelion. And it, um, it, <laughs> it actually, oh, there's a little piece of all heel in here. It uh, is completely edible and um, good for you too. So it's different than, than a dandelion. Um, they actually grow this on purpose. This is in everyone's yard. This is in everyone's yard. I don't can't imagine that it would not be in somebody's lawn. It's the fuzzy, it looks kind of like dandelion, but it has the fuzzy leaf. And, it, and then other, the dandelion just has like, you know, the short little yellow flowers. These have the really long stems and they're fuzzy leaves. And a lot of the leaves turn a little yellowy, mottly looking. And you will find this everywhere, cat's ear. So totally edible and more importantly, um, it's medicine too. So it's got lots of vitamins, lots of minerals. Um, the root has been used as a coffee substitute. So if we ever run out of coffee, you will always have a supply of natural coffee. You just clean these roots off and they come out pretty good too, usually. Um, not like yellow dock, they're fairly easy to get out. And so you can roast the roots and use them as coffee. So that would be your coffee um, substitute. And um, so what I've done here, a couple of them have kind of gone to seed just to show you. These guys are like thoroughly washed, like seriously washed. And, and what people do is they, um, they, if you get ones with nice fat leaves, which some of my bigger ones have them, these have little leaves, um, they saute them. And so they just saute them in the... Um, whatever you want to saute them in, anything in, like, you know, I mean, typically it'd be garlic and butter or something like that. So they saute the leaves, and, I, and we tried that. I don't know if you guys remember, we tried that um, a couple weeks ago, and um, and um, it was, it, the, the fuzzy leaf is just not turning me on at all. It's kind of like, that's just, it's a little too weird even for me, and I do, um, I do eat a lot of really, bizarre uh, healthy foods and um, herbs and weeds and things but this it's just the, the consistency of the of the fuzzy is not working for me so so I have put it in the smoothies and it gets all ground up so you can't tell which is awesome because we want the health benefits so um, it also has uh, lutein in it lutein lutein it's good for your eyes good for your eyes and um, uh, it's antioxidant. Um, like I say, they've been growing it in on purpose in, in Japan and in Greece. Um, and uh, it's got a, um, it has, anyway, I'm going to chop some up and put it in there, into the soup. Um, it has a natural allergy thing. So if you use it in a tea, it has like a, it's not really a natural cortisone, but it's a um, similar to that. So I'm going to cut these guys up super fine so that you can't see them <laughs> or taste them in the soup. They don't taste like anything. They're just fuzzy. It's fuzzy on your tongue. I know I used a fuzzy on my tongue. So I'm going to cut these up really fine. And um, actually, you know what? Because I washed them so well, I'm going to add some of the root as well. And um, so, yeah, so they're antioxidant. Um, and, and like I was saying before with you guys is that, you know, we keep eating the same foods over and over. And so you've got your carrots, which have got what carrots have 
naturally by themselves. And then you have um, the, nutri the, the, the nutrition, nutrients that it's pulled from the ground. So you're getting whatever those minerals are that are in that particular soil. And so um, the weeds, like dandelions and these things and many other things, they have, um, you know, they're pulling up all kinds of trace minerals that, that we don't have normally have access to, you know, or get in our diets. And so um, it's really, really important to, to give your body different foods and, and it's different tools. It's like handing over different tools to fix um, different cells, different, you know, help the pancreas, help the liver, help the kidneys. And all of a sudden, it's got something in it that maybe you haven't um, accidentally ingested with some other strange thing that you had, or maybe some kind of herbal tea that you had years ago. And I was like, oh my God, I've got you know this trace mineral of, um, you know, I can't remember the names of them all, but but it is really important to uh, to add foods. And besides which, <laughs> this eating these and putting them in soup, if there was a world famine or a disaster or something going on, you have not only free food that you can eat, even if you have to grind it up, um, but you have, um, you have a nu nutrient rich, um, like a superfood. You really have that and you put that in your soup and that reminds me of stone soup, right? So, so they would put the, um, they put the stone in the soup when they had nothing else. And I'm not really, you know, I don't know the history of that story. I'm not really um, so sure that, that that didn't, that you couldn't just get the, the minerals out of the stones, right? Probably your body can't break that down as well as it can through a plant because a plant, a plant or an animal um, breaks down and, and sort of, um, God, what's the word? Um, they break down the the uh, nutrition, right, into a form that we can assimilate. Is what I'm going to say. Of what? And I can't remember the word. Okay, I better eat some more of these. <laughs> oh no, I need to eat some more of these. <laughs> so I can remember the word. Anyways, um, yeah. So they break it down so that we can actually absorb it because it would be harder for us to absorb anything directly from um, a stone. I think you know it depends on what it is, right? So if there were minerals from the soil or whatever. So yeah, so you can add things like this. You can add dandelion, you can add um, medicines. We have a, um, the, I found self-heal. You know the self-heal, oh my gosh. Um, I'm gonna add more cabbage to that while I'm talking. Um, okay, I'm gonna back up and then I'll go forward. <laughs> Cause I do that a lot. Um, yeah, so, so to add the wild foods to it really increases your nutrient value, um, helps your body to have access to all different things it might not otherwise um, have and can really use. And so uh, your dandelion, your cat's ears, all of those wild foods, we talked about cattails a couple weeks ago, um, you know, yellow dock, the, the little new shoots of the berries, you know, all of those contain different um, and, and just little bits too. You can add a little bit of parsley and parsley has the most vitamins and minerals of any culinary plant for sure. I mean, um, nettles are right up there too, but they're not, they're not something people typically have, but parsley is like huge in um, uh, supplying a lot of, of minerals. And when you, when you work with parsley, and I had said this before, like pretend, pretend this is parsley stem. So when, you, when you're working with parsley, it is really important to use the stems, not just the leaves, because the stem is concentrated in what parsley has, and you want to cut it on a little bit of an angle here, and uh, so, that it's, so that more of the um, surface shows, in, and then you get more of that concentrated nutrition. <laughs> so, um, okay, so back to the self-heal. We found, I, we found, I found self-heal more. I thought I had another piece here. Oh, I do. Well, this one, I, I kind of broke the top off, but it's a little purple flower. You guys will, will know it when you see it. Um, this one's on its way out, so it, it, like it's already seeding, so it doesn't have much purple. 
But we talked about that a few weeks ago, too, and um, and it's uh, it's called self heal or all heal, and it's just good for everything as a tea. And I remember what I was going to say earlier. <laughs> um, oh yeah, <laughs> you can add these things, the wild foods, um, instead of purchasing things like, I mean, I love, I love, and I always buy my astragalus, my ashwagandha, and all of those um, herbs that are in my morning powders, and, and the herbs that I put in my smoothies, and all that kind of thing, but those all cost money, and they're expensive, and so, um, so what we're exploring this, this year, this summer, is the um, fantastic nutrition in the wild foods around us, and I mean, if People in, in Greece and Japan, and, um, and in, it comes from Europe. The, the cats here originally came from Europe, apparently. And those guys value it. They know what it is. You know, they, they um, use it, and I don't know why here in North America, you know, if it, if it interrupts the smoothness of our grass, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an unwanted weed, which, um, you know, we really need to expand our minds to look at the at the nutrient value of all the foods around us and because just because you know just because it's not what we consider normal you know oh, we have to get rid of it and um, you know we really need to start exploring that and uh, valuing the foods that grow around us that we're just not used to that's all we're just not used to it if you went to Japan or Greece you probably have a whole sauteed dish of, of cat's ear leaves and they probably know how to cook it <laughs> to make it taste fantastic and you'd be like wow is that ever cool you know really exotic food anyway back to the i just had to say that because it because my because uh, i need another saskatoon berry i won't need it i'm talking anyway okay so back to the self heal all heal it's really really um it's been used for healing pretty much everything which is why it's called self heal all heal um, it's good for the lymphatic system. It is also good for allergies as a tea. Uh, it's very antiviral. Um, it, uh, externally, you can use it on your skin for boils or abscesses or um, any kind of skin condition. You can make it and use it as a salve. Um, it's also good as a tea um, for your whole intestinal tract and your, your intestinal membranes, like for, um, for your colon small intestine, your stomach, it's just very healing. It's all healing, and that's why I call it all heal. What I wanted to tell you, which is super, super awesome, uh, is that I've noticed, have you noticed, it's growing in all the lawns, going back to my rant about the, the, the so-called weeds in the lawns. All heal, you know, we walk for an hour every night around town, and I'm seeing all heal in all kinds of lawns, like, many 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 lawns and so i think that's really interesting during this time where there's such a concern over our health and our immune system and the virus and blah blah, blah uh, that the all heal has come to present itself and and offer tea in your lawn like a good tea and a good tasting tasting tea and something that you can actually purchase at the health food store is growing free for us to use and i was um a few weeks back I was talking about the uh, foxglove and the foxglove containing digitalis, which is all, you know, for healing the heart. And it's, it's a drug, right? It's not, you're not going to do anything with um, foxglove yourself. And I wouldn't either um, because it can be very, very uh, toxic. It's just that they managed to manifest a drug out of it that's really good for the heart. Anyway, my point was for, um, there was foxglove everywhere this summer earlier and, um, and it's all about the heart. So so it, the foxglove brought heart energy medicine to us to help us through this heart time. Everybody's got hearts on their windows. And so the foxglove came to bring in extra heart energy medicine, which is like super awesome. And now the foxglove is, is seeding and, it, and the flowers are going away. And so now we have self-heal, which is also called all heal. And I'm going to call it all heal because that's what it's doing. It's come here to heal us all. And so I um, make sure you know what it is. Make sure you can identify it. Like, don't ever pick or ingest anything that you don't know what it is for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. But these guys are pretty easy to identify. So look up some YouTube videos and um, on identifying them. 
And if they're growing in your lawn or anywhere around, you know, where it's not been pesticides or chemical or sprayed or anything, you know, make sure that it's a, a clean um, area. And this is, this is free tea that's really, really, really good for you. So I encourage you to check it out. And I, I'm just amazed at how nature has brought in, you know, hey, you guys, you know, with what's going on, this would be really good for you. And I think that's like super, super cool. So, um, so anyways, yeah, I am actually going to, and if you want, um, who knows what's going to happen this winter, but I actually picked a, um, a whole Rubbermaid of those, of the cat's ears, and I am going to wash, I'll go through the, you know, make sure, get rid of the discolored leaves, I'm going to wash all the leaves, and I'm going to dehydrate them to put to, into soups later this winter, whatever tomorrow, I don't know, whenever they get dried. So, um, so I encourage you to take advantage of those things. And, um, and I'm really wishing I had, I mean, there's been so much to do. I'm wishing I had dried more dandelion leaves, but they're pretty easy to buy at the health food store too, or, you know, wherever. Um, but yeah, I'm going to dry these and use them for soups and, um, and you can use them for tea and medicine in the, uh, um, as well, you know, when they're dried. So, yeah, so go out and get a bunch of these, and you don't have to put it in soup like I did. You can just dry it and use it as a tea. Um, yeah, because it's really, it's a, it's a natural um, balancer for allergies. Um, it's, um, it's got antioxidants, it's got potassium, and a bunch of other good stuff. So, uh, yeah, so it is a good addition to soups and stews and whatever. And once you dry it, I'm sure we won't even notice those little hairs. So anyway, okay, I better let you guys go. Um, it was really fun. Thanks for coming and hanging out. And um, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 11. And get out there and enjoy that sun because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head out to the garden right away. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so check out all my YouTube videos. I've got, like, I don't know... 150 YouTube videos on fast, healthy, easy cooking that's good for you and um, other hints and tips about um, foods and health. And be sure to subscribe and tell your friends and share. <laughs> See you tomorrow.